So welcome everyone. Uh, I'm going to try to make this relatively quick and then we can actually discuss a few things. So, um, so the mini agenda within this little session here is uh, talk very briefly about CUPS 24X uh, and the printer application where we stand and then uh, planning for 2.5 and OAuth um, and we'll probably defer most of our OAuth discussions to the afternoon, well, afternoon for me, later for you, um, with Piotr, uh, just because uh, he'll have a lot more content for that. And then we'll talk a bit about 3.0 and, and uh, what's been going on there. Uh, so, Zednet has uh, been doing a great job uh, releasing uh, updates to 2.4x. Um, I think we're pretty close to uh, a, another point release here. Um, I know I've been pushing some changes, and he's been pushing some changes, and I have a few pull requests I need to to review. Apologize for not getting to those. I've been a little busy, uh, but uh, but things are shaping up very nicely there. Um, I think our biggest uh, bug has been. Uh, some of the FUMATIC drivers and and the default uh, color mode. Um, yeah, so people only get black and white or color output. I forget which way it, it, it defaulted. And um, so I think we'll have that all resolved here. Uh, I also have a bunch of OpenSSL fixes uh, in the 243 code base. So if, if you're packaging up cups with OpenSSL, um, since I added that back in, um, uh, there were some issues with the certificates, and I'm still working out um, some last issue with Chrome OS compatibility, um, but I'm hoping that will be settled very soon here. And then on the printer application front, uh, I've been kind of slacking off doing two printer applications, and, and Till's got four other ones, so... Um, but I think we have most of the current uh, CUPS printer drivers covered with the existing uh, printer applications, and I'm hoping that we will have a, a, a much better Guten print printer application coming in the future here that's a little better integrated. But um, I, th I think uh, we're in pretty good shape for, for as people transition from, from the old PPD drivers to IPP everywhere. So please interrupt if if there's anything. Uh, get the chat up here in case somebody posts questions. No, yes, I would some, probably have. Yeah. Sorry, Till. Go yes, on. Someone also to say about the print applications, the four print applications which I've posted that it are retrofitting print applications which simply encapsulate PPD files and classic drivers, and they are supporting all the print, uh, containing all the printer drivers which are available usually for distri in distributions, all the ones which I found in the Debian distribution. So with this, at least for, for normal printers, which print on paper, they, for this we are covered when we switch over to the new PPD-free, uh, uh, new PPD free uh, architecture, there is no loss of functionality. And for the Braille embossers, we have a uh, uh, Google Sum of Code contributor working, so we are fully covered. Right, so I'll move on here. Um, so for 2.5, uh, last year, Till had volunteered to be release manager, and I'm assuming, Till, you're still uh, available for that role? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, so uh, we pushed the dates back on the release here, mainly because we've been so focused on, on other things in open printing, but um, the proposed schedule here would be to start uh, rolling out betas for 2.5 in March next year. And the reason for that is to give us time to get the OAuth um, development um, solidified so that we have something that can actually be tested and and deployed. Um, 
And along with the OAuth stuff, the other um, big feature thing will be to get the localization stuff um, synced up so that we're using, um, I'm, I'm blanking here, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a, a, a localization service that's used by most of the distros and just to centralize that so we can get all the localizations put into the CUPS project Web-late. itself instead of being... Web-late, yeah. It yeah. was Web-late. Right. Yes, yes. Nick is using it already for system config printer. He can help us to use it also for the rest of open printing, especially CUPS. Yeah, I mean, I've been using it for PAPL as well, and that, that's worked out well. So um, I think once we get that, then we'll have a little more consistency with the localization. Um, and um, I think that'll make everybody happy. And, and um, along with that is to when we're generating a PPD file for an IPP everywhere printer to include all of the localizations um, that are supported by the printer and not just the the one that matches up with our current locale because we do have have users that, um, that are operating in multiple languages uh, at the same time. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's helpful for the PPD file to contain all the correct localizations. So anyway, that would be um, something we can we'll be able to talk about at the next uh, LPC, um, and um, you know, at that point, we'll be talking about how we've we've put it out, and it's and and we're working on you know two five two or something. I hope um, and. Uh, then it, you know, it's it's been successfully rolled out, and and we're all happy with that. Um, I don't know if there's anything specifically that that we need to uh, talk about with this uh, at the moment. Uh, I got one more slide on two five that's for the OAuth, so maybe I'll I'll skip forward for that. So um, for the OAuth, there's protocol uh, level work that's being done over in the printer working group. And this is uh, mainly to to, uh, take what's out there for OAuth and and come up with something that we can um, implement and and use interoperably. um, Because there's a lot of different ways you can implement OAuth. Um, but they don't always line up. And so, um, you know, effectively this is, you know, follow best practices um, that are are already published. And and these are the things that you need to do as a client and as a printer in order to to allow everybody to to function together. And um, so uh, that, has been moving along quite nicely in the last couple months here. And um, so we'll have have uh, a solid foundation to build all this on. Um, and then um, in 24X, I added in um, the APIs needed in order to, to support OAuth, but none of the, the guts behind it in order to, to provide uh, a default user interface um, you know, provide the bearer token or any of that stuff that that would be needed, and of course, nothing in in CUPSD in order to to use OAuth uh, for uh, printer sharing. Uh, so, this is probably the the uh, the only significant work that needs to be done for two point five, um, because the localization will be more a matter of pointing uh, weblate at at the CUPS project and then merging the localization changes as they come in. Um, but uh, here we need to either develop a, a default uh, UI to use on, on Linux uh, or you know some, some other uh, uh, interface there so that we can, um, when uh, a service needs OAuth, we can um, get the necessary credentials and also be able to 
to provide them at the command line, which you know probably means uh, application tokens or, or something like that that you you register at the command line to use for a particular printer. Um, and, and then obviously we need to implement on the server side. And um, I've got some code to go into libcups uh, to support uh, JSON uh, web tickets and, and some of the other OAuth stuff so that all of the stuff we need in order to be able to uh, produce and consume um, the, uh, the tokens and, and, um, and go through the whole process of, of uh, obtaining them um, we'll have in cups, and then it just be a matter of of uh, testing it end to end, and and uh, and and making sure everybody's got the, the pieces they need and, and their corresponding distributions. So, uh, any questions here? I know there's a lot of information and a lot I talked about, but. Monica, any external questions? No. So no, it's too complicated for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a feeling uh, this uh, later we, when we get into more OAuth discussions, we'll have a lot more discussion there. Um, but I have a feeling um, uh, from from my end, I, I know we need to coordinate with uh gnome desktop and and whatever they've been doing already to support oauth um, because this is something that'll come up um, as user interface right and so we want to make sure that everybody's happy with that and that uh, what we do is appropriate and scalable and and so forth and and then yeah. interface with that um, from libcups so one thing will be a little difficult with that is when we uh, when we need someone who implements it in uh, in KD and GNOME. I don't know whether we get the upstream maintainers like uh, like no, 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 Marek Kazik working on this so that it gets already ready in March or May when when the Cups 2.5 comes out and the next. The next resource would be the Google Summer Code 2023. And this would mean I put up a project idea and we'll probably find uh, some two or three students who work on that. But this will start in May when more or less when the 2.5 is officially released and take, take time until September and then we will be already close to the 3.0, 3 but probably the, the interface will be the same. So that it, the, the, li the lifetime of 2.5 and the real life and the lifetime where one can actually use or off from, uh, from a graphical user interface will be probably very short. And then there's also the delay when the Google Summer of Code is, is over, it takes some time until the distros catch up with it. And probably they have to do it as a distro patch as the toolkits will also have their delay to get to release that. Well, I'm hoping that, that the user interface that provides this can be a debug service, something that can be kind of bolted on the side. It doesn't necessarily have to be integrated into GNOME. It can be another package that's that's uh, put out, but I'm not aware whether or not GNOME has uh, existing OAuth uh, user interface code or, or APIs. Because um, it's a little hard sometimes to navigate the, the documentation and, and, and so forth, such as it is. Um, but um, I also look at 2.5 is, is one of those um, it's one of those releases that's going to be around for a long time. Whether or not it's it's in in mainstream use, um, I don't know. But it's it's going to be the last release of Cups with printer driver support. And uh, based on on some of the feedback that I've seen on the GitHub 
uh, issue tracker. Uh, there's uh, at least a few people that are afraid to move to printer applications and um, or, or have, have some other concern with that. And so I wanna make sure that we have a transitional release, um, even if it's not 100% of where we wanna go. And then I'm also recognizing that, um, you know, however we have CUPS 3.0 scheduled, um, you know, the the uh, the schedule for product releases is is always uh, a bit optimistic, and um, and, yes, and whether or not people will want to adopt Cups 3.0 right when it gets released is is a whole other matter because there's there's a whole lot of of other decisions that go into uh, what software to include in a distribution uh, above and beyond just Hey, this is the latest and greatest thing. We should include it, and um, you know, depending on the target of the distribution, it may not be the right answer. You know, in 2024, it might be more in 2025 or 2026 um, thing. So, at which point we'll be at a, you know, cups 3.1, cups 3.2, or something. But um, I, I want to make sure whatever we do here. Uh, we lay the foundation so that we have a clean transition from 2.x to 3.x. And and part of that is making sure we have uh, a single sign-on replacement for Kerberos because um, as much as some people love Kerberos, it's, it, it's uh, very long in the tooth. Yes, yes, like PPD files. Yeah. Yes, my plans, my plans to switch into the new architecture are the following. Now, currently in the Google Summer of Code and me by myself with CUPS filters, we are all working hardly on getting everything coded. And the we I, my my plans are in Ubuntu 23.04, so next April, I want to do the switch over into the new architecture. We don't have CUPS 3 yet. What I do is I switch from uh, I switch from the CUPS Debian package to the CUPS Snap. And the CUPS Snap is already a nice rehearsal for the new architecture, as you cannot add drivers and PPDs to the enca encapsulated CUPS in the Snap. And so you have to use printer applications as drivers. And also at Canonical, we are looking into making a Snap-only distro, and there we are forced to switch into the new architecture. So we have to use printer applications in this one too. And so with this, we will get the rehearsal for the new architecture. Users will use the printer applications and, and CUPS has to, and, and creating queues. And so works as with CUPS, with, as with CUPS 3.x, we will have a GNOME control center with the printer modules, which supports the new architecture. So an add printer when you have the cup snap or cups three in a year later, you will see that for a printer which is not driverless and not therefore displayed automatically, you will have you either the GNOME printer setup tool will search for printer application at first, whether it's locally installed. If not, it will query the open printing web server and find which printer application fits to the discovered printer. And then the printer application will be installed in case of Ubuntu from the Snap Store, and in case if SnapD is there from the Snap Store, Snap Store and if SnapD is not there, then we will see in our last session today, and so we uh, we will get the we will get the printer application, and so printer drivers are handled as as we had CUPS 3.x, and so we have Ubuntu 23.04, Ubuntu 23.10. Enough time that users try it; it's not LTS. The users report bugs, we fix them, and then when uh, CUPS 3.x, when it comes out on schedule in the end of 23, then it will run into, 20, into Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. 
but we have already trained the new uh, the new architecture and so we can mu much more smoothly introduce cups 3.x when we are in an lts and in a, in a long term support ubuntu and also other distributions can learn from our, our rehearsals in ubuntu 23.04 and 23.10 and so for them it's also more easy much easier to get into cups 3.x as they already know a lot of things and is we have upstream already fixed several bugs from the ubuntu users and this way, this, these are my plans, how we get into CUPS 3.x and the new architecture. And for the OAuth, I think what I will have to do is, as soon as possible, talk with the people in the desktop team at Canonical, where I'm part of, and to see whether there's already stand, standard DBus protocols for OAuth authentication because all of authentication is not only for printing but also for other stuff and if we have already something there we could perhaps make use of it for printing using the same dbus interface and then using things we have already we already have and some some elements of graphical user interface for example firing up a browser to get onto the authentication server such things we already do in GUI for the captive portal, captive portals for Wi-Fi, and we will always we will already do it also in the GNOME Control Center and the print in the new printers module for accessing the web interfaces of the print applications. So we will have already the code to access web interfaces. And so we, will, we could already find out whether, whether we can find a quick and short way to get OAuth uh, authentication for printing into the GUI. And only if we, we really need a lot of coding and, the, and Marek and whoever is work, do, and I, I think it's, what's the name, Asta, Sid. Or so from QT, the guy from QT, how long, how much time they can spend. And so we must see, and only as a last mean, if we do not get together this graphical user interface before the release of CUPS 2.5 final, we will have to get into the last resource of running to, to something like two Google Summer of Code contributors on that. But yeah. the interface will not, probably not change from 2.5 to 3 of CUPS. So if it takes too long and, to, and CUPS 3 comes out, the interface will still work. I hope so. Uh, well, well, here's the thing. I think we don't release 2.5 until we have the OAuth user interface because that's the key feature of 2.5 is to actually support OAuth. And if we can't, there's no sense that, you know, the, 2.5 is OAuth and, and localization improvements. So I think we continue 2.4x updates until 2.5 is ready. So if it doesn't end up being ready until next fall, then that's when we release. Um, because we well, need a transition release. And if we don't have it, then uh, there's no sense in doing a 2.5. Uh, yes. Yes, if we would not, not do 2.5 because the pace of the GUI people is too slow for 3.x, three, for three would it be, be better to, to do, not do 2.5 and right away do 3.x, or would it be better to delay 3.x? I would say we want to delay 3.x because it's more important that we have a clean migration path for, for our users. We have uh, yeah. 2.x, and right now, if you're doing single sign-on and you're doing printer drivers, right now you have to use Kerberos and, and CUPS 2, 2.x. And come CUPS 2.5, you'll be able to do Kerberos and OAuth and printer drivers. And so that gives you something that you can continue to use for however many years. Um, 
until you can switch to CUPS 3.0. And in 3.0, we'll have OAuth, but we won't have Kerberos. So yes, we yes, need this to is make sure problem. that it's clean. I don't, you know, from the standpoint of getting 3.0 right away, that's, you know, a fantastic goal. But if we leave half of our users behind, then we haven't done them a service. Yes, yes. So I, I, I remember the hard, the hard switch you did if from CUPS 1.5 to 1.6 with the broadcasting and browsing and what, how much work it was for me to make, to do the switch over so that the users do not get note of it. In the, when the one at, at first I had to do a big distro patch to take the to take the old system, one, dis, one, distro ver, one Ubuntu version further, and then I have to create Cups Browse D so that the users do not get load of it. And this was really a lot of hard work. And if we get a nicer, smoother transition, which is not a hard transition, one, one feature goes away and a new feature replaces it in the next version, that this would be much easier for distro maintainers. Yeah, and that's, that's really my goal is to make sure that we have a good transition. Yes, yes. So the 2.5, we will even need if it has a short lifetime. Yeah, well, uh, it's going to have its typical one to two years of, of use, I assume, and maybe a little longer given uh, that 3.0 is going to be uh, a major shift. But hopefully the time we've given for all of this and the printer applications we have in place will make that transition easier. Yes. And one thing which is also important, the printer applications already work with the current cups, so this makes the transition easier too. Mm -hmm. And so we can already tell to printer manufacturers, no PPDs anymore, it's, it's over make printer applications. And, and Perhaps I, I did did say it wrong with uh, with short lifetime. It's more short time between two releases for between two dot five right. and three. We still keep the the two dot five so that we have the the switch over release, the transition release. But we co can still in time do the three dot x so that the three dot x can go into Ubuntu twenty four dot oh four without needing to 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 uh, delay it. The only reason for a delay would be that we put a lot of work in 2.5 and have no time to uh, come out in time with the 3.x. But I am I think you will succeed to get out with the 3.x in time because you are already heavily working on it. You have already cluttered our GitHub with a lot <laughs> of the components of the 3.x. Yeah. Well, speaking of 3.x. So I will clutter it too. I will, I, I will split cups filters too. <laughs> So uh, we'll keep track of the team. time here. I think we need to, to uh, move on, um, but um, we'll talk more about OAuth uh, later. And um, yes, yes, we have our session for that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for three dot um, I'll be release manager for three dot and the major goals are to get rid of the PPD files and just use IPP everywhere attributes and values so that we're an all IPP stack instead of being this zombie hybrid uh, of, of, uh, of old and new. Um, we wanna split out the local printing from uh, sharing um, because they're really two completely different use cases. And, and uh, we've for a long time had a lot of complaints about the fact that we have to run a full cups just to you know, cup server just to, to do printing and it shouldn't be that way. And, and so we'll have that resolved here in 3.0. Um, and then we'll be able to split things up into sub projects so that we don't have to do lockstep for every little change that, that, uh, that we make. Um, so I've got um, a libcups repository. I'm gonna cover this a little bit in, in the subsequent slides here um, that's, getting cl really close to beta state. Um, and that is being used by all of the other uh, components, um, which will be, you know, getting to a beta state uh, over the next year. And um, 
I'll just move ahead on the slides here just to show the, the basic architecture here. So we have um, at the user level, we have a applications people are running, uh, commands that they're running, and a local server. And talk about that very briefly here. And I've I've talked about this over the last several years anyway. Um, and on, at the system level, a sharing server, if you're doing printer sharing and any printer applications, and I put them at the system level just because uh, things like USB communications and, and, and so forth require root access typically. And so um, they'll either be running as root or some other protected user um, and uh, you know, handling anything for a printer that's not already IPP everywhere or AirPrint or something. Um, and then underneath it all is CUPS library to be able to handle communications and all the other stuff involved with, with printing. Uh, so the library re uh, repository is at this link and it's mostly complete. Uh, it's, it's very stable. I've been doing a lot of uh, testing and, and, and uh, development obviously and, and, and uh, really trying to beat it up as much as possible. Um, all of the APIs in 2.exit were uh, flagged as deprecated are now removed. Um, I have gone through and renamed uh, some of the types and functions to, so for consistency. Um, anything that's returning a one and a zero for a Boolean value now actually uses the bool type. Um, so we require C99 and higher, which I think is a fairly safe assumption now that we're in 2022. Uh, and uh, and the size T type uh, for things that are sizes uh, rather than int, and um, so that can be a little uh, confusing when you're porting code over. Sometimes we get some warnings there, but um, it's fairly straightforward. And I've actually got some conditional code in in Papal to handle building against either two dot x or three dot x. Um, uh, 2.x has a whole bunch of of uh, uh, private APIs for threading, uh, manipulation of the data files uh, that are used for IPP tool and IPP EVE printer and, and a few other things. And I also abstracted away all of the DNS, DNS, DNS SD uh, uh, functionality for for uh, sharing um, and 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 discovery into its own API and that currently does Avahi and MDNS responder and will soon also support the Windows 10 plus uh, DNN, DNN, DNS SD, say that three times fast, uh, 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 functionality uh, on Windows uh, so that the same library can be used on all these platforms and everybody's happy. Um, and uh, there's some localization stuff too that got promoted, uh, you know, because the the cups lang stuff was was half public, half private, and so that's all 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 nice and and public now. And uh, there'll also be a JSON um, API that's going in there. And uh, there's uh, documentation on this migration. Uh, there's a migrating the MD file that you can look at, and then. The CUPS programming manual has a whole section now on migrating from 2.x to 3.x. Uh, most things don't change, but there's the odd thing there that, that might trip you up. And uh, so it's it's worth looking at anyway. Um, fairly straightforward. Anything that you're getting a value, now the function name has get in it. Anytime you're setting a value, it has set in it and so forth. So uh, just consistency there will help make it easier to, to use the API. Um, so uh, this last comment here is a little out of date since I did the slides because I did finish the localization stuff, um, but um, we also want to add in the Dbus interface for uh, for the local server, uh, and I'll uh, be working on that very soon. And then there's a laundry list of IPP tool bug fixes and enhancements. Um, a lot of stuff that, that is coming from the printer working group in order to test printers and 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 implementations um, but just generally good stuff uh, anytime you're using ipp tool to do reports and 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 other things so uh, 
that's the library project and like i said it's it's basically complete and ready to use um and i've gotten a few people sending me bug uh reports on on things that didn't work and it's like oh yeah okay i guess that didn't work yet and uh there's unit tests and and things being run on every every push to the repository and that, if i'm uh, available when we get to the to the continuous integration uh, part of this session i'll uh, i'll talk a little bit about that but uh, essentially uh, uh everything that i've i've been able to to test in this library is being tested now i think we're probably in the 80 percent range for for the apis and and the functionality some of the stuff it gets a little difficult with networking but um i think we're we're uh we're doing much better than we used to. Uh, so the commands repository is out there, um, and I actually I'm kind of in the in the process here. I think I'm going to move LP admin over to the sharing server since it's really only usable for sharing server. Uh, but all of the other cups commands are now in there and work. Uh, LP options still needs a few changes, but um, it's mostly. I'll settle there and, and build. And again, it needs the the uh, CUPS library project in order to build against. Um, so uh, that's in really good shape. Uh, I call that pre-beta because I haven't actually done any testing or unit test uh, stuff to, to make sure it all works. But um, uh, that is available. Um, and then the local server thing, and I got ahead of myself here because I haven't pushed this up to the repository yet. Um, but we will have very soon the baseline server code so that we can start uh, testing a local server running as local user instead of being as running as root. And all it does is IPP everywhere and 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 IPP requests to printers and and all that stuff. So uh, you know that that will be available very shortly. And um, and again, pre-beta, you build it, use it at your own risk. Um, but um, you know, as we go along, this will get filled out and and will support more things. Um, one of the question marks for me is, uh, and we'll talk very briefly at the end here about about this is how to best support Windows servers. Um, but um, that that's discussion for for in another five minutes or so. Uh, so in the architecture here, the local server is responding to the normal uh, uh, local host and, and uh, uh, domain socket um, uh, request, uh, but also have a new DBus API so you can uh, submit print jobs and do all, all the stuff that you need to do. Uh, over dbus as well and internally it will have this notion of uh, an ipp system service um, it will have hooks in to be able to display alerts on the desktop uh, do any any authentication that's needed um, at, you know pop-up OAuth uh, authorization uh, ui and so forth and keep track of the printers that you're using and the and the jobs that are, are queued up and uh, through all this, it will um, generate PDF and and uh, PWG raster, Apple raster, whatever is necessary in order to uh, send the job to the printer. Um, and part of the configuration here will will be um, having uh, uh, files that will say, "I've got a print server here. I've got a printer over here that can't be discovered via DNN DNN SD." Uh, but um, but use them anyway, and those will be reported back to the client as available printers, um, just as if you had set them up with the LP admin command. So that's the the graphical uh, architectural for the uh, local server. All right, the sharing server pro uh, project. Also, I haven't po pushed the the, the code yet uh, to the repository, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. soon. And this is this is the the part that will probably take the longest to develop. Um, 
because uh, you know a lot of the accounting support and and the OAuth support is going to depend on what we do for two five. So I'll have an initial version there that 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 has the basics, um, but it's not not going to be um, fully complete until we've built in all of the other stuff, and and that's going to require a lot more uh, back and forth. Um, both for OAuth, but for the accounting side, how we want to integrate it in uh, database backends and all that fun stuff. So, uh, and then have the the slide showing this graphically as well. And um, sharing server gets a web interface um, and a cupsd.conf file kind of a thing, um, but it um, it will support a lot more stuff and it will support. Um, in particular, pull printing, uh, so that if you have a printer set up and you know one one common queue, you print to it, and then you go to a printer and you punch in a code or you swipe your ID card, and your print job comes out at that printer. That sort of functionality will be supported by the sharing server. All right, so uh, for 3.0, because we have no PPDs, we're going to need new user interface. Um, and uh, so that means uh, buy-in from GNOME and KDE and, and others. Hopefully, we'll be able to reuse some of the code we've already got, um, but it will mean uh, getting rid of any PPD dependencies. Um, we have the Authentication UI, um, which will be shared with what we uh, do for CUPS 2.5. And we also have a consent UI. And um, this is uh, part of the job accounting with IPP best practice that we published over in the printer working group. But basically, this notion that uh, if you're going to be printing through a server that says, I need to know what what operating system you're running and what application you're printing from and all this other uh, public or you know personal information along with who you are and 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 what your birthday is and whatever other bogus information that they might be asking for that that needs to be uh, explicitly uh, approved by the user to say yes I really want you to send all this information and um, and so we have um, a mock-up of what that UI can look like in that best practice. And if you go on the IPP workgroup uh, webpage, and I don't remember if I have that listed on the resources at the end here. I don't. Um, make sure we have that, that posted someplace. But um, essentially, it's just, you know, here's the information that the, that the printer wants from you, and then you can say yes or no, and or yes to this and no to that kind of thing. We have functionality that says, this is what I have to have, this is what I'd like to have. And then you can, you know, in the user interface, allow the user to, to select what they wanna do. And then if they say, no, I don't wanna send any of this, then we don't send the job and, and, and the, uh, the printer never sees that, that information. Um, so, um, a lot of stuff on the UI that we need to do for 3.0. Um, there's also the notion of command line authentication, API keys, um, whatever you want to call them, uh, that we need to make address that also for 2.5. Um, so this all kind of ties together. Uh, the print profile support, and maybe we can throw that into 2.5 if we get uh, consensus on that soon enough. Um, so that if you can't use uh, MDNS, to discover the printer, then uh, this allows you to, to, to set up profiles that, that users will have. Um, and when you go on, you know, an enterprise network, hey, this is, this is what's available for printing. Um, and obviously for the printing, we're focused on IPP everywhere and AirPrint and Mopri and any other IPP based print solution. But we also have SMB printing, um, which is, more and more legacy in the Microsoft world, but is still uh, something that's that's very important. And I think for that, we're talking PostScript or PCL. Uh, maybe we do that with printer application, 
um, but we need to make sure we have that covered. And then the last thing there, print to file. Everybody wants to be able to print to a file um, as opposed to exporting to PDF. I don't know why, but that's just, you know, the bulk of printing on Mac OS, every time we would, we would check the statistics was to print to file and not, not to actually get a piece of paper out. So that needs to be uh, addressed uh, in the print dialog user interface. Yes, print to file usually should not go through CUPS. Usually when one sees a print dialog, a GTK dialog, for example, it's di simply direct, the PDF stream is simply directly saved into a file and not sent through CUPS. And so I always was uh, thinking about that print to file for CUPS itself is not important. Or are there situations when uh, you would like to have the print to file uh, implemented through CUPS. Yeah, so um, from the standpoint of printing to a file in CUPS, I'm not interested at all, but I know there are situations where people are doing print to file uh, queues in order to, to do some special workflow and, and put it into a document sharing uh, document storage uh, system or, or to run a, a particular command on it or to integrate it in some way with something they've got. And, and for that, we have uh, printer applications and I actually have a, a virtual PDF printer application um, sitting in the wings there um, that uh, one of my customers has funded the development for. So that will be available uh, soon, um, I'm hoping. And, um, and that gives some of that functionality. But this, to just be able to make sure that our print dialog has a way to instead of sending a PDF that we're generating that would normally go to CUPS, I want to send this to a file locally and not go through anybody, just put it in a file. And so I want to make sure that we have all of those standard use cases addressed so that when we release 3.0 uh, to the world, it has all the functionality uh, that 2.5 had and more. At least, you know, yes. as far as what we want to support. Yes, that's important. I always, when when there are cha major changes, and I'm responsible for cups in Ubuntu, I always ha have to take care. And sometimes with workaround, like once it was cups Brausti, that the users do not perceive anything. That everything work which worked before continues to work in the same way as before. Right. I'm just noticing we're down to, to four minutes before the next portion of the session when I have to drop off here. So yes, let me just we have four minutes left. Yeah, so let me just uh, cover this last little bit on the planning. Um, the the linchpin on, on 3.0 is on these uh, the transform of the document data. Uh, so I've got my PDFIO library that can handle all the PDF transforms and that seems to be working really well. I have the outstanding issue uh, to, to support converting the forms into, you know, printed content. That's, that's a, a, a process there, but we'll get that um, done. And then the last leg here is the rasterization and, and, and right now we're using Poplar uh, uh, on Linux, and um, and there's also Core Graphics. There's GoScript. There's Moo PDF. Um, there's PDF VM from Google. Um, uh, PDF VM has a a, a nice open license, uh, but it requires uh, Google's build system, which makes it a little hard to use. Um, uh, Moo PDF. Uh, is AGPL, which kind of makes it a non-starter for anybody that's that's using uh, cups in a commercial environment, um, because suddenly it becomes this this service thing. It's got a special uh, condition in in the AGPL. Um, so, uh, and MooPDF also has this API that, on the surface, is very nice, but on, it changes with every dot release. So um, I, I got tired of chasing after it. So um, right now we have code to do this stuff. 
um, with Poplar and Core Graphics, which is what the Mac OS uh, graphics library. Um, I've been looking at Cairo as a way to render content, you know, along with uh, uh, Pango and FreeType um, to maybe come up with something that will render PDF content, but uh, that's a long ways away. So um, for, for the standpoint of Cups 3.0 today, um, I'm kind of of the belief that we, we uh, fire up a copy of, of Poplar, um, the uh, PDF to PPM, I think is the program to rasterize uh, any, any uh, PDF content we need and um, generate the PWG raster or Apple raster and, and then send that off to the printer. And then in the future, if we can, we can, um, we can switch to a different renderer. For this, we can also use the PDF to raster filter function of CUPS filters 2.0 because it, it also uses the Poplar library and it generates uh, by itself at least uh, PWG raster, Apple raster, and CUPS raster. And so uh, one can easily use that. And this is. Uh, as the long term uh, long term testing of being a part of cups filters and got also a lot of testing now recently when i finished the code for cups filters 2.x so this is also an alternative and it can be called as library function or or as external executable depending what or what is better for the situation i'm using it in the print applications also I don't know what just happened with the zoom on this, but um, okay, I, I yes. have a hard stop now. I need to, to switch to another meeting. Um, Phil, can I pass the uh, presenter to you? Yes, yes. Now I will continue. I will continue with the uh, with the CI session. I have your slides of oh. it, and so I will uh, I will do the CI session and. The documentation session. I don't know whether you are back for that one I, or not. I should. I should be. Um, yes. I, I, I have. I have to be off for the next half hour. Whether you make it back, it's either me or you who is doing the documentation session. And for sure, you are back for the last session with the containerization. Yes. And for yes. Great. Then thank you for now for the first session about the planning of CUPS and then uh, pass the, the presenter back to me so that I can continue with the next session. Okay, you, you have presenter, so I'm going to drop ah, you yes. now. I can take it. I must and, click. And I'll, I'll ah, yeah. take you all in a little bit here. Thank yes. you, Mike. I, I can clean up your mess here. Yeah. See you thank later. You. Uh, uh, before uh, till before moving ahead, I just have a question. Uh, so, Zernik, are you taking the notes uh, at your in your in your side? Uh, because it it seems like there is a confusion. Monica has shared a document, so she's under the impression that you are taking the notes, and I guess you are under the impression that she's taking the notes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I, I, oh, this is so awkward. I've. Added to the shared notes because then I can see the slide and then take notes. Uh, oh, okay, so Monica, you mean to say that you are uh, taking the notes at your end in a separate place? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great, great, no problem. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm basically well in, in Google. In BBB it. chat, Mike has, a, has made a mess. Okay, so uh, on a generic note for everyone, uh, there are discussions that are going on on oh, the chat section. So please Mike have a look at the chat chat section also. So in case we have oh, anything okay. to communicate now. in between the sessions, we are putting it in the chat. And that we have experts and call yes. boys. <laughs>